I believe I can jump five feet. I just happened to pick five feet because the other day my son and I were seeing what we could do on a standing broad jump, and I can standing broad jump over five feet, so I think if I can uh, take a running start, I would have no trouble jumping five feet. In my little graphic picture, depiction of my answer, this is the belief. You can make it anything you want. I believe there are no gods. I believe there is a god. I believe no one can know whether there is a god or not. The distance here is whatever you feel the consequences would be if your belief was to be disproven. This distance here, although it says five feet now, it's, it's this isn't your belief. It really it's not your belief. Here's your belief, but this is what you feel comfortable defending your belief against, or this is the perceived challenge that you've had, or challenges you've had in the past, and you're very comfortable explaining yourself or defending yourself. This could be how you feel about the person that you're discussing the belief with. Maybe you're intimidated or you're not so intimidated. Okay, that's what this represented. And from the word go, if it's a belief that you feel very comfortable with and you're not being threatened at the beginning of the discussion, it's like, hey, look, see, I believe this. You simply say it, and you assume everyone's going to believe that you're sincere, and you'll even offer whatever you consider to be your simplest uh, evidence for why you believe it. Typically, at this point of any debate, there's not going to be a lot of hostility, there's not going to be a lot of passion or emotion, but what happens if the person's perception perception changes. What if they do feel a threat? And what if it's a very significant belief? Well, now I'm like, hey, I could get hurt. Uh, this could cost me something if I uh, were to somehow fail, if my belief didn't hold up, or my defense of my belief didn't hold up. And at this point, you, you might start to get a little emotional. This is where I picture myself saying, hey, why should I prove anything to you? You know? I didn't come here for this. I've already shared what I believe, and if you don't believe me, you think I'm insincere, tough crap on you. So I figured for the graphic's sake, I added a little motivation, whatever it might be. The people in the room, your reputation, all right, not that big a challenge. In fact, it's the same threat, right? The same guy, it's the same argument I've heard many, many times. It's just that uh, this subject, you know, this belief means a lot to me. But with the proper motivation, I decided most of us will, hey, I know this handle it. So we haven't gotten to the point probably yet of name calling, you know, and of uh, just abusive language and whatnot, but I changed the circumstances again. Now let's say it's this belief is so significant to us that we feel inside that if it were to be disproven, it would be life-threatening. I mean, it would be, uh, we just can't imagine going on in life if we were not able to sustain that belief. And now, it may not matter, even if the argument's the same one, or, or, or even if the person, is, again, is not someone that we, you know, find to be intellectually superior and just going to thump us, you know, in a debate. The point is, we just think that, that the, the, the risk is too high. Then we might get defensive. And here's where I say, oh, there's no way. I wouldn't do this. For, for simple little rewards and motivations, I would not risk a belief that was so essential to my happiness. And um, I said, well, you know what, that may be true, but if there's enough motivation, and I'm not thinking about a debate in a room now, I'm just talking about in real life, if your beliefs are challenged, despite the risk, if you really believe it, you're going to act on your beliefs. That's what I think we do. And, and my my thoughts, I came up with this idea that people don't, they don't hold pure beliefs, I don't think. At least I'm going to postulate that all we really do as humans is we take a position along what I call a belief-doubt, um, belief-doubt state, let's call it, where, where uh, you may believe to a certain degree, but there's always going to be this opposing degree of doubt. And 
I, we filter that, you know, once we've taken a position, our mind reviews all the evidence that we have, and we take a position on a certain subject that's demanded that we take a conclusion or make a conclusion, and we've taken a place along that line. Now, there are other things that come into our, you know, whether or not we're going to take that jump, right, whether we're going to go ahead and act on our beliefs. Not only is it the belief-doubt state at the time with the information that we have, but there's also a filter that I'm calling the risk-gain analysis where, you know, that's why I said when you throw in the motivations, look, what do I stand to gain? Hey, uh, that's cool. I would like to have that, and the risk isn't so great. I act on my beliefs. Uh, if the gain isn't enough, but the risk of staying uh, you know, is is much more significant, then you'll act on your beliefs. If the gain is enough and the risk is great, you still may take the jump. My point being that when you begin to feel pressure into taking that kind of a risk, and especially, let's say, you, you perceive the the threat to be greater. That's There's the threat again. Here's the argument I'm facing. Oh my gosh, this, this guy's making sense and my belief's not holding up. And in fact, if the circumstances you know, go bad enough for you, it may actually get to the point where you you go from a belief-doubt state to a doubt-belief state, or perhaps you even have to abandon your belief, and your perception again is uh, is fatal. And as I hope, uh, I hope you'll comment. I think this is a uh, this is close to something you've been getting at for a while. Enjoy. I'll be back.